and this is Alan from Primordial telling you that you're listening to What Metal. Okay, we have uh, never featured Primordial before in our program. Uh, perhaps you just explain what your band is about, what style you play. Um, the first and foremost thing is that we're Irish. Um, we've been going, I guess, for about ten, guts of ten years. Um, three albums out. Imrama on Cacophonous from 95, Journey's End on Misanthropy from 98, and the new one Spirit the Earth of Flame on Hammerheart Records and a kind of mini album last year. Um, and that's really the sort of brief uh, release history of the band. Um, there, are, there have been a lot of uh, label changes. What have been the reason for that? Um, well, with Imrama, the thing was that with Cacophonous, a whole lot of uh, Ill illegal problems and various legalities that we just um, uh, in the end we just signed for one album to be honest so we were free to leave after that because of all the problems and with Misanthropy well they finished of their own accord so um, we would have had to look for a new label anyway so and we just decided to go with Hammerheart you know and be uh, sh shall we say a medium sized fish in a medium sized pond rather than a little fish in a huge pond you know um, what would you say, how has your sound developed over the last 10 years? When I'm right, uh, in the beginning you played with uh, all this corpse paint stuff and uh, today it's more, much more emotionally based uh, extreme metal. Yeah, I mean, when we started off way back in early 90s it was more like sort of some sort of satanic death black metal or something, uh, like early Sam Ale or something. And um, we just grew and we did a demo in 93 that's, I suppose, pretty much rooted in the second wave black metal scene um, and those releases. Um, but even on the first album, in Rama, we have, um, you know, some strange rhythms, strange timings, some uh, more like rock bits and some eclectic sort of normal singing and stuff. So we were always even then trying to do something different, but you could still say the Primordial has its roots in black metal we're just sort of evolving you know pushing the boundaries and stuff you know okay, um, were you satisfied with the show today yeah i mean it looks like we missed the good weather by half an hour which is a pain in the ass but i think we performed well even though we made a few mistakes ourselves but probably not mistakes that anybody but us would know us but it's kind of annoying but um for us it's just a question of finding your feet in, in this sort of festival environment you know but I'm glad to be here though, you know, so. Have you ever played uh, on such a huge stage before? A few times. We played at Vakken two years ago and it was a fucking nightmare due to various people having alcohol poisoning and all sorts of stupid stuff. Um, and we played at the Wave Gothic, well, what existed of it, about two weeks ago. And a few times in England we played in the uh, Story of One, which is pretty fucking huge to be honest, but not quite the size of that, no. Um, have you heard uh, any um, ratings from the reviews of the last record, Spirits of the Earth of Flame now? How have the reactions been so far? Um, very good. It got, um, well, we got the album of the month in Legacy. I think 14 of 15 and then 9 from 10 in Rock Hard and 7 from 7 in Hammer, so... It seems this time um, the responses to the album have been the best for anything we've ever done. And now people are able to get it in shops and we're here to play a few gigs and hopefully on tour in a couple of months. So the whole thing is becoming much f more focused, much stronger, much more professional and we're sort of moving in the right direction after all these years, you know. Um, when I look at the Irish scene, I think uh, that all these bands from Ireland uh, have a certain mood. Um, yeah, like Primordial and Arcane Sun, uh, Waylander, uh, bands like these. Uh, what do you think is the origin for that? I think the thing, one of the main things is that, you know, we're stuck off the end of Europe. You know, we're not actually, we're part of the scene, but we're not kind of in the scene, so to speak, in a certain way. So we all have a, uh, uh, evolved musically with a certain attitude towards um, the music that we make. And that's generally, I think, pretty individual because we don't have certain scene pressures on us. Um, and as well as the scene is small and pretty hardcore, so people generally don't tend to copy each other, you know, so. But yeah, it's true, there's quite an in, uh, individual spirit sort of in Irish fans, you know. And metal in general, is it popular in Ireland? 
No, it's got the English disease in English speaking countries, you know, because of Kerrang and MTV, metal is pretty much dead, you know. So, there's a hardcore of people into it, like I say, playing in bands and that kind of thing, but um, it's nothing compared to 10 or 15 years ago, you know. So, we only sell a couple of hundred CDs in Ireland, maybe two or three hundred oh, tops, so pretty pathetic, really. Now for uh, the cover of uh, A Journey's End, I thought that this is a very strange cover for such an album um, with this guy on the on the cover. Who is he and uh, what is the meaning behind it? Um, well, the cover of Journey's End is a long and annoying story in that it was originally supposed to be the face of this guy and then my Zanthory basically made us change it to this boring fucking brown cover that you see on the CD. But... That was the cover, the cover that you're talking about is the intended cover and that's on the vinyl and hopefully on the re-release of the CD at some stage. It's, um, it's a painting by a friend and at the time when that album was made there's a lot of bitterness and melancholy uh, gone into that album. It comes from quite a dark and obscure place I think and the atmosphere of that picture being particularly striking seemed to fit the atmosphere of the album, you know, so... Um, I heard that uh, some of uh, someone of the band, I don't know if uh, if it was you, has done uh, cover artworks for other bands, at least uh, for Eastwind. Is that right? Uh, have you done anything else? Um, not in a long time. I used to do gig posters and artwork for like Thanatos and Morgoth and stuff in the late 80s and early 90s and I think Morgoth, yeah, and various other logos and bits and pieces for Irish bands. But generally, I don't really have time to f fuck about with that, you know. There's been an album cover of something I did in like an hour or something, you know. So, no, but you know, I should do it a bit more probably. Yeah. <coughs> can, uh, can you still remember your best and your worst live show? And uh, can you tell us what hap what happened there? The worst was um, undoubtedly Vakan in '98, which was fucking appalling, um, sadly. And also a gig in Liverpool in England in 1995, which was really really bad. Maybe to only 20 people there or something. Um, the best so far have been, I think, um, in Lisbon in Portugal. It was really, really special, really good. Um, just really great crowd and it was really good feeling to be there, you know. And um, We played one really good show in Berlin. There weren't many people there, maybe only 60, 70 people, but we really played really well. I enjoyed that. Generally, I uh, always enjoy it, you know. That I enjoyed that quite a lot, you know. Despite the fact we didn't play as tight or as well as we can, but, you know. Were you satisfied with the sound today? Um, the sound on the stage went sometimes from being very good to very, um, very strange, as if somebody was messing with the levels when we were playing. I don't know what it sounded like on the field. Everybody seems to say it sounded okay, so... Uh, Seems to be been okay. It's easier for me because I'm just singing, you know. I don't have to hear, you know, they have to hear exactly what they're doing in saying tune. And, well, I do as well, but it's easier for me, you know, so. Our program is called What's Metal? Uh, what is metal for you? What is metal for me? Well, um, I guess without sounding like uh, Joey DeMaio or something which is cool, but uh, it's, uh, I guess, what's kept me alive all these years, you know, it's something I couldn't, couldn't fucking live without, it's in your, in your blood, you know, so, that would be my best answer, is that it's in your blood. <laughs>